Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Principal Software Engineer Pivotal, John Schneider. Are you ready to kick off the day with something really modern and exciting and forward looking? I know I am. That's, uh, that's why we're going to start out with a little discussion about the 1922 St. Louis Cardinals. Something a little different. This was a different era in baseball. For those of you that aren't fans of baseball, it's, this, was, this was a time when you could go up the bat and just stuff your baseball glove in your back pocket, you know, in the middle of a game. It's, uh, it was a time when there weren't any names on the back of uniforms, very little protective gear, very simple stadiums and whatnot. One of my favorite stories from this time was a story of a, a doubleheader. So two games played in the same day between the Cardinals, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs. Between the games, the two managers went out for dinner um, and just kind of talking over dinner decided that each of them had a player that was better fit on the other team. So there's these two players, Cliff Heathcote and Max Flack, and there at dinner, these two managers decided, we're just going to go ahead and do a trade uh, for these players. And there weren't any, you know, really advanced contracts at the time, so the trade was made, and right before the second game starts, the nightcap game starts, the players were informed that they just had to go switch dugouts, and because there weren't any extra jerseys laying around, they just had to swap sweaty jerseys, right? Like, that's, that's just kind of how it worked out. I kind of feel sometimes like this is a good like, uh, illustration of where we're at, uh, often as application developers and organizations. We have to do the same job. You know, We have to play third base. We have to release our application code, um, operationalize our, our, our code. But what keeps changing is the cloud platform. You know, we, um, one day we're, uh, on, we're on virtual machines, and the next day we're on infrastructure as service or public cloud. and then. Then we're moving to containerized workloads, and now we're talking about serverless workloads. It's a multi-cloud world. One thing we, we, when we're talking to customers, we hear it time and again, is that they're not on just one single cloud platform or abstraction. They've got a little bit of Kubernetes over here, and a little bit of Cloud Foundry over here, and a little bit of Azure over here. Um, they're not on one thing. So we know that that's, that, that, that's, that's something that's facing everybody. You've even got organizations like Target who've got thousands of Kubernetes clusters. They have one in each store. So the, the examples can get pretty extreme. This is why we're announcing or we're focusing now on providing you a, uh, a multi-platform delivery solution um, that sits on top of these cloud platforms and, and abstracts away some of the, the delivery concepts for you. So Spinnaker is a tool, it's a delivery platform that started at Netflix originally, and now is being contributed to um, in earnest by Google, uh, by Amazon, Microsoft has worked on it in the past, by large organizations like Target, and now Pivotal as well. Spinnaker is one of the few multi-cloud delivery platforms. It consists of two essential components. First, an, a, a multi-cloud application inventory. That inventory, when you point Spinnaker at your Kubernetes cluster and your Cloud Foundry foundations and your AWS account, it's going to present you right out of the box with a view of your applications, the clusters that that application consists of, and the instances that are in those individual clusters. And it's going to do that right out of the gate without you ever having deployed something with Spinnaker. You see, the, the multi-cloud inventory is key because applications rarely sit on just one platform. If you're on Cloud Foundry, you probably have multiple Cloud Foundry foundations, one for dev, one for staging, one for production, maybe two for production, maybe 10 for production. And the application is going to span those foundations. Spinnaker is going to present you an aggregate view of the application across those foundations so you can reason about its health and its state across those platforms. And then the second component of it is pipelines. 
and we know you have some pipeline mechanism going. It may look something like Concourse. It may be Jenkins. It may be a set of custom scripts and so forth. Ideally, in the future, we'd like you to divide uh, your pipeline into, like, leverage your existing a assets uh, for continuous integration and allow Spinnaker to help you with the delivery aspects of your pipeline. We've, one thing that uh, we feel is, is really coming and, be, and, and really gaining importance is this, is this application inventory. Uh, we previously talked about uh, this process of continuous integration and delivery as one circle of code, right? You start with source, you build, you deploy, you observe, and that feeds back into uh, the next iteration. But there's these tools on the side that, that, that kind of orbit each sphere of influence. So for example, let's take an example, vulnerability scanning. You, you may have a tool in your organization that performs vulnerability scanning at build time to ensure you're not including any libraries with known vulnerabilities and, and, and you know, uh, deploying them to production. But what happens when there's a splashy headline tomorrow about a key vulnerability in a common Java library that you're using? You need to be able to, uh, to search and assess and, 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 and determine where you have user-facing production assets or critical assets that have that vulnerability. And so ideally, uh, a vulnerability scanner would, uh, would use something like Spinnaker's multi-cloud uh, application inventory to determine where your code is, what packages it contains, and perform the scanning there. Tomorrow, there'll be a breakout session where I'll go into more detail on exactly how that works, an example of performing zero-day security vulnerability scanning against uh, Spinnaker's multi-cloud application inventory. But there's other tools in this space, too. There's actually quite a few. Uh, you may have heard of uh, the, the concept of chaos engineering or Netflix's Simeon Army. This is a tool that runs out of band of any particular deployment and uh, terminates individual instances in production or in, or in any other environment to prove that your applications are resilient to failure when that failure is ultimately going to occur. This, too, is something that doesn't really fit into the circle of code. It's something that works out of band of it. Um, and that's how we really feel like Spinnaker is distinct. Um, other pipeline execution engines, like a Jenkins or a Concourse, they may help you actually deploy your code in the first place, but they don't present that inventory for these other tools to sit on top of. The news, I suppose, that, that we're announcing today is that Pivotal has, we have a team uh, working on contributing Cloud Foundry support to open source Spinnaker. Um, that support has landed in open source now, and an early version of Cloud Foundry support for Spinnaker will be included in the October 1st Spinnaker release, uh, 1.10 release. Um, Spinnaker already supported Kubernetes because of Google's support. It already supported AWS. Um, uh, Azure, uh, GCP, App Engine, et cetera. Um, so really, we're just a partner now in this open source ecosystem, ensuring that Cloud Foundry is a first class citizen there as well. Our, our hope is that you create a balanced cloud diet, that you, that you use the best of each of these platforms, um, take advantage of the, 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 the individual uh, services that they provide, and then use something like Spinnaker to help present to you a consistent operational view. And also um, to use Spinnaker for its best practices. Um, some best practices can be generalized across cloud platforms, as hard as that sounds initially. I know Kubernetes feels very different from a traditional public cloud, VM-based public cloud. But some best practices can be generalized. And in fact, some of those best practices are stronger with the generalization than they are on the individual platform. So take, for example, red, black, or blue, green deployment. Um, traditionally, um, so red, black deployment is, is this act of leaving your existing version of code running, launching another version of the code in another cluster, um, and then moving your routes or moving your load balancer to the new cluster, leaving the old one intact. The idea being that if you ever discover an issue with a new version of code, you can quickly roll back to the previous version. 
Spinnaker um, has a consolidated view of what application health looks like. So it, it queries the platform to determine if an application is healthy, but it also queries the platform-specific platform, platform -specific health indicators. So uh, if you're launching a new cluster, it may take a little while to warm up and become ready initially. The, uh, if a platform was to do a blue-green or red-black sort, of, uh, sort of thing, um, it would know about the platform indicator, but it wouldn't be able to query the application health indicator. Spinnaker looks at both. So when you, when you have that, when you use the Spinnaker abstraction for red-black, you're going to launch the new cluster. Spinnaker is going to wait until both platform and application health indicators report healthy, and then it's going to flip routes. Um, and so you can imagine that being done not only for red-black, but also for automated canary analysis, for rollbacks, for, uh, for health checking in general. Um, the, the generalizations can be quite strong. That's what we have today. Uh, we, we, uh, we really hope you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll work with us on, on Spinnaker uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and improve your continuous delivery efforts. Thank you. Thank you.